Imagine how shitty you must feel if the announcement of your departure from a company ends up leading to a 13% share increase. <laughs> oh man. Hey everybody, Walrus here from Walrus Street, bringing you your news for the week of January 18th, 2021. Important to note really quickly, the week actually does start on the 18th, but Monday is a holiday, so the markets will be closed. The markets do open on the 19th. Just a reminder, I'm not a financial professional. All information in this video is for entertainment purposes only. This week was a weird one in the stock market. We actually had our first net loss in a week in a little while, and it's just kind of a jarring reminder for a lot of newer investors that stonks don't always go up. Now, I don't think that the big red candle on Friday was really a indication of a reversing trend, but I do think people were taking profits off the table before the three-day weekend and just seeing what kind of news does come out of this weekend, especially with the presidential inauguration coming up this coming week and earnings kicking it into high gear. Let's take a look at some of the news. Just a reminder, if you haven't checked it out yet, every week I do post my technical analysis. I added sends this week. This is not the greatest technical analysis in the world, but it's actually my my practice for the stocks. That being said, I still share it with you guys so you can actually see what I'm doing, what I'm looking at during the week. The link is below the video if you do want to check it out. I feel like I can't go a single week without talking about either Tesla or ARK, but it is what it is. It's what's hot. The fact is they do move the market. ARK Invest plans on creating a new ETF, ARKX, to tap into the space exploration industry. They filed the security filing with the SEC last Wednesday. What's important, the ETF's constituents have not not been announced. People are assuming Virgin Galactic, Maxar Technologies are going to be included and those share prices jumped. I went to the SEC website, I read through this entire filing and good lord. If you ever want to be completely bored out of your mind, read an ETF filing. There's actually not anything interesting in there. So I saved you guys the time on that one. You're welcome. This is from the ARC page. If you don't know, these are their current ETFs. They have the innovation, autonomous technology and robotics, next gen internet, genomics, and fintech. So they will be adding ARCX to this list. There's not really much information. If you go to their investment solutions on their front page, click on their space exploration focus, you can kind of get an idea of what industries are gonna be represented in this ETF. Reusable rockets, orbital aerospace, suborbital aerospace, aerial drones, 3D printing, enabling technology. For me personally, I'm invested in space, Virgin Galactic. I feel like its addition into this ETF is gonna bring a lot of stability into the investment. This is also going to be a very well-timed ETF, especially with Elon Musk announcing that SpaceX is going to be going public here soon-ish. Biden unveils a $1.9 trillion economic and healthcare relief package. This is not unexpected, and we did have a little bit of news about it previously. The proposal is divided into three major areas, $400 billion for provisions to fight coronavirus with more vaccines and testing while reopening schools, more than a trillion in direct relief to families, including through stimulus payments and increased unemployment insurance benefits, and $440 billion for aid to communities and businesses, including $300 50 billion in emergency funding for state, local, and tribal governments. One of the things that caught my eye about this is that there's going to be an approval of about 35 billion towards making low interest loans available, particularly for clean energy investments. I realize that 35 billion is not a huge percent of a 1.9 trillion package, but for startup businesses that are focusing in clean energy that aren't profitable yet, the access to low interest loans of that magnitude is going to have life-changing effects on some of these businesses. Because because people don't know which way clean energy is going, whether the US is going to focus on hydrogen power, EVs, solar panels, water power, wind power, we don't really know. What most people tend to be doing is investing in clean energy ETFs. The one that I see talked about most commonly is ICLN, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. What I think is actually more impactful though is going to be QCLN. This is the First Trust NASDAQ Clean Edge Green Energy Index Fund with a price currently of about $80 74 cents a share compared to ICLN's $30.56. Why do I like QCLN more? Biden's plan is to invest $35 billion in small businesses. These are going to be U.S. businesses. And if you look at these two, you could see ICLN is larger, but QCLN is still respectable at about $3 billion assets under management. If you go to their holdings, QCLN has 45 to ICLN's 33. But what's really important, if you come down here to the country breakdown, QCLN has 75% of its holdings in the U.S., in U.S. companies, whereas ICLN only has 
30% of its holdings in US companies. If you're making a play on clean energy based on the stimulus plans, which one makes more sense? Obviously, making a play into QCLN makes more sense, even though it's more expensive price per share, there's a higher likelihood that the companies within this ETF are gonna be benefiting from the stimulus. Definitely worth considering. I gotta mention this one. Twitter stock falls after Trump's account is suspended. Twitter shares fell by as much as nearly 10% early Monday before pairing some losses and trading down 6% by midday. So we had a 6% loss, effectively, just because the platform banned one person's account. To be clear, this wasn't just Twitter. Facebook also did suffer a loss over banning President Trump's account. If your company ends up losing 6% of your share price just because you're banning one user, I really think that brings the valuation of the company into question. Politics aside, that's not a very good signal or a very good sign of confidence from investors in the company. Amazon, of course, is the premier retailer in America, but Walmart has been doing its best to compete with Amazon. Walmart's been offering a lot more online options for shopping, expanded shipping options, and it's been diversifying its store's products. Walmart is to create a fintech startup with investment firm behind Robinhood. Walmart's going to launch a fintech startup with Rivet Capital, one of the investment firms behind Robinhood, and we all love Robinhood. The retail giant interacts with millions of customers, including some who don't have a relationship with a bank or financial advisor. And this right here, this is kind of the crux of the article. 6% of adults don't have a checking, savings, or money market account, according to the Federal Reserve. About 16% are underbanked, meaning they have a bank account, but also use alternative financial service products like money orders. Those Americans are more likely to turn to short-term solutions, such as pawn shops or payday loans, which can lead to additional charges or high interest fees. If you're not familiar with payday loans, they tend to be very predatory, and the people that typically go with them are in lower economic classes, and it ends up being more of a financial burden on them than a boon. If you think of the people that shop at Walmart, just check out peopleofwalmart.com, they are of the lower socioeconomic classes, typically. These are the kind of people that are not going to be banked by institutions. This is actually Walmart expanding a service that its own customer base is going to directly benefit from. I love this idea. I absolutely love this idea. And I think it's fantastic in its effort to compete with Amazon, Walmart is going to be diversifying into the fintech sector. Let's take a look at earnings for this upcoming week. It's important to note that we are getting into FANG season with Netflix reporting this week. We're also right in the middle of banking season and earnings are in full swing starting now. Netflix, I'm imagining, is going to have a huge swell of new subscribers. And something about Netflix that I'm going to be watching on the earnings report, if after hours on Tuesday, Netflix reports a surge in new subscribers, subscribers. I want to see if AT&T and Disney both have surges in their share price because AT&T is servicing HBO Max, Disney is servicing Disney Plus. I want to see if Netflix positivity ends up translating to positivity for those other two companies. My theory is that it will. So let's see if I'm actually right Tuesday after hours. There's a couple of companies here that are benchmarks. They're a little boring, but JB Hunt is an over-the-road trucking company and CSX is, I think, the largest train company or one of the largest train companies in America. America. Companies like this that move products and retail goods tend to be bellwether companies for an economy. You can look at jobs data, unemployment claims, whatever, but if you want to see if people are still able to spend money and move products, these are the kind of companies that you want to look at. Also, I'm going to take a look at Intel. I want to take a look at fuel cell energy right here on Thursday. So very quickly, CSX, this is their chart. You can see they're actually been in a very consistent uptrend right here. Like this is an amazing uptrending channel on the chart off their earnings report. Their last one, they ended up shooting up a lot higher. They had a pretty big earnings beat. I'm expecting this to continue. JB Hunt also, you could see they're not in as consistent of an uptrending channel, but they have been climbing pretty spectacularly since the beginning of the year leading up to this earnings report. I think people are expecting a pretty large beat from Hunt on this. The reason I want to look at Intel, it's not because I love the company. If you were paying attention, last week Intel made an announcement. Their former CEO, Bob Swan, is being released and they're appointing a new CEO named Pat Gelsinger. Bob Swan led Intel to not really being successful. The share price immediately upon this announcement took whatever the opposite of a swan dive is. Bob Swan's going to remain in the role until February 15th before Gelsinger takes over. You could see right when the announcement was released, Intel's share price shot up, like just gapped up five bucks. It ended up being a 13% rise off of the announcement that they're firing their CEO. Imagine how shitty you must feel if the announcement of your departure from a company ends up leading to a 13% share increase.
increase. <laughs> oh man. Although as a silver lining to him, I looked up his compensation package online and he is compensated in shares. So it's almost like he gets fired, the shares rise and he looks at his portfolio and he's like, well, all right, thanks guys. I'm not saying he torpedoed the company on purpose, but uh... <laughs> All right, let's take a look at fuel cell. Now, fuel cell energy is coming in about 1584. This is a hydrogen fuel company. Plug Power is the more popular hydrogen fuel company. This one is also another competitor in the space. Now, something that's interesting about fuel cell this week with their earnings coming up. A couple days ago, Plug Power ended up making a deal with SK Group from South Korea for $1.5 billion US, where SK Group is investing into Plug Power. For reasons that I don't know, as soon as this announcement announcement was made for plug power, fuel cells share price ended up spiking. And since then it's come back down to earth. This is one of those things where just like the Netflix announcement, I'm anticipating AT&T and Disney stocks to rise. Just because plug power got the huge investment, fuel cells price went up. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Also this week for fuel cell, their stocks sink after JP Morgan analyst turns bearish saying it's richly valued. This analyst is saying Wednesday it closed at $19. He's establishing a $10 price target, which is 48% below that Wednesday close. And you could see it's already halved from there. According to this JP Morgan analyst, this is an incredibly overvalued company. Looking at a company like this that people are saying is overvalued that goes up on news from its competitors, you can kind of see there's just a lot of insanity in the market right now. I'm interested to see what happens with their earnings report this week. You can see their last earnings report, miss, miss, even miss. Historically, they're not doing well on their earnings report. I would be expecting another miss right here, but I actually am so scared to play this earnings report. Even though I'm confident the company is gonna have another earnings report miss, I don't actually wanna play any options this week on it because there's so much irrational exuberance around hydrogen power and clean energy that I think this might actually Actually just ignore all of the analyst opinions, ignore the bad earnings report, and there's a chance that it goes up anyway. I am going to be making a play on Cleveland Cliffs, and the chart is a big reason why. If you guys remember, I made a video on steel a couple weeks ago, how steel prices are at an all-time high. Throughout the rest of the year, steel earnings should just be absolutely insane, and the company's valuations historically follow steel prices. So if steel prices are high, their earnings are huge beats, their stock price rises, whatever. Cleveland Cliffs on Friday ended up having this massive red candle that basically undid two weeks worth of gains. And you could see it's been a steady riser. So right now, options are much cheaper because of this red candle. It's my plan to give this about two weeks to recover, and I'm gonna buy some at-the-money two-week options on Cleveland Cliffs, just to play this recovery. Also in the next two weeks, I'm expecting Biden to have some more announcements on infrastructure expenditure. So that's probably going to have a positive impact on the Cleveland Cliffs stock price. Since infrastructure includes steel, you can see where that goes. This is my Robinhood portfolio, my trading portfolio. You could see it was a pretty darn good week going back. Now this is the options play that I made last week. This was the Afria earnings and inauguration play. You can see I averaged in at uh, $130 for each option. I got four of them and currently they're valued at $445. So this was a really, really nice gain. You know, we're up 240% on this one. The rest of my options are still in the positive. I know they're red, they're in the positive, so that's doing good. For the options that I'm gonna play this week, I'm going to be selling some pretty far out of the money covered calls because I don't know how the inauguration is going to affect the market exactly. This is not an event that happens very commonly. For Rocket, I'm actually going to move all the way up to the 21.5. I'm going to go ahead and sell one contract of that and just collect the $9 in credit. I'm also going to go over to Nokia. Nokia just had some big news last week and they partnered with T-Mobile and the US government for some 5G. Their options are actually looking a little richer this week than usual. I'm going to go ahead and sell the 4.5, collect the $5 on that. You know, typically I was only making a dollar, two dollars every time I did this for Nokia. I am not going to be playing any options this week on Space or GameStop. GameStop's in the middle of the short squeeze. Space is going to be moving a lot depending on how the ARK ETF announcements go. Now for my options play for the week, my kind of big one, I'm going to go out to Cleveland Cliffs. We're going to go to trade trade options, and we're gonna move out actually two weeks. I wanna give this two weeks to stabilize, and I'm going to buy a call Right now, the share price is at 16.65. I am quite confident that we're gonna be rising. So I'm actually going to go ahead and buy this 1650 call, and I'm gonna open up five contracts of this. So $460.
I'm actually going to be purchasing about 100 shares of Ford Motor, and this is going to be an EV play for me. Now remember, whenever you're purchasing, go ahead and set a limit order to protect yourself against price spikes. I am going to set the price at the market value, but in case it goes up, I want to be able to manage it. And I'm going to be buying 100 shares. Now, funny story with Ford, I have been selling puts on Ford now for about two months, hoping to get assigned, and I've never been assigned. So that's why I'm just buying these shares outright. All right, those are my options plays for the week. Nothing terribly exciting, but I did have a good week last week with the Afria option, and I'm fairly confident with this Cleveland Cliffs play. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to be releasing my DD video on Sens, Sensonics this week. So if you can, go ahead and please check that out for me. If you enjoy the content on the channel, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to make sure that you get alerted as soon as my videos go live, please hit that notification bell. Thanks so much for following, everybody. I really appreciate your support. See you next week.